All right, boys, so the Pacers traded for Siakam. Uh, the Raptors are mostly getting a draft picks package back. Uh, you're getting both of the Pacers' 2024 picks, which is most likely going to be between the Thunder or the Clippers, the Pacers' own one. Now, at the time of me doing this, uh, we don't know the protections on the picks that the Pacers are sending, but it is three firsts, the other one being in 2026. The Raptors are also getting Bruce Brown and with how much time there is until the trade deadline, sometimes, you know, recently traded rules can be a little weird, but if it's possible for the Raptors to move Bruce Brown to another team for more stuff, I imagine they will definitely look to do that. Uh, Kyra Lewis, as well as um, Jordan Nwora in a second rounder are going to the Raptors. So, okay, definitely, you know, a picks-based thing, and we'll see with Brown. Um, I guess the Raptors, similar to the OG trade, they were like, yeah, we don't want to wait around to the deadline. We're, we're ready to move these guys, and we're ready to go on to the next stage of this team, which is Scotty Barnes and... I mean, I've already said very nice things about RJ and quickly there so far. So, okay, I guess if you are a Raptors fan and you were really hoping for just one young prospect to feel excited about coming back here, whether it would have been like a Matherin or, well, maybe he would have just been like the one you could really hope for. Clearly that did not happen. And based on the only other team that was really rumored like that for Siakam, as in one that potentially looked like it was going to happen was the Kings. And I mean, the Kings were never going to give up Keegan Murray, and so it would have had to have been a heavy picks-based package thing for them, and I guess the Pacers were the one team willing to do it. And uh, the last thing on the Raptors before we go to the Pacers is, um, look, the Raptors pick, it's top six protected. They currently have, like, five teams that are uh, clearly worse than them, and so if they want to maximize their lottery odds, uh, this gives them the best chance of getting their pick this year. But still, they have good players in the roster. Um, I do think for the rest of the Raptors, like I think Gary Trent Jr. is definitely a possible name to get moved. And now for the Pacers. So one talking point is, of course, going to be, you know, will he resign and all that stuff? I'm just going to assume the Pacers are confident that Siakam will resign, and I'm just going to kind of leave it at that. Let's talk about the fit with him in Indiana. So you immediately think about just him playing in the Pacers' high tempo system while also helping them on defense, right? But you know, you think about it in the offense, and Halliburton has missed the last few games with a hamstring strain. Uh, he will be back soon. It was not as bad as it looked initially, right? And so whenever the Pacers push off of makes, off of misses, obviously Siakam can exist within all of that, right? Uh, another thing with this team is that they love a spaced floor. They love getting quick screens on the ball for kind of anybody. You know, it could be Buddy Heald with a ghost screen. It could be, of course, the bigs like Miles Turner or Jalen Smith, the uh, with quick little screens just to engage the defense, then they kind of get out of the way so that Halliburton can make the next player. Maybe it's Nemhard, maybe it's McConnell. You'll have Neesmith or uh, Matherin getting in on this as well, uh, Obi as well. And so Siakam, obviously he can be the screen setter in those situations. And so if teams are going to try to put two to the ball on Halliburton, of course Siakam can exist in the middle of the floor and then make the next play. Uh, whether it's looking for his own shot, getting into the spin move, whether it's kicking out to somebody, Siakam can do all this really well. Uh, he can also cut off of any actions that don't, don't involve him. Now, I know people are going to talk about the three ball, which overall for his career has been slipping the last few years. It has been really good in the last few games, if you really want to care about that. But I think what the Pacers are betting on is with how spaced of a floor they have and the fact that typically they only, they only got like one guy in the paint usually, and it's usually like off of cuts, off of rolls and everything, that Siakam can be a huge plus to their offense and his three ball is not going to be a problem. Now, we will see long-term with that, but obviously the talent upgrade is massive. Uh, he can also just get busy in the half court, say if possessions just die for whatever reason. So maybe teams are switching a lot of actions or whatever, you know, which nowadays, well, when Halliburton's out there, can result in, you know, Halliburton getting to the step back or trying to cook one-on-one -on -one or whatever. But now Siakam can also go in, into one-on-ones as well. And, you know, the dude loves to work. He loves to get downhill. He loves to go to the spin move and... He's effective at all these things, you know, so he does give the Pacers uh, an option that they didn't totally have before this, like a big forward who can work one-on-one -on -one when the situation asks for it. But Siakam can also be the ball handler when you try some of those creative screen actions the Pacers try. I mean, look, when, when Fred was there, they ran the Siakam-Fred pick and roll with Fred as the ball handler, right? They could do it the other way around too, but you think about how Indiana can make that work as well and how willing the, pretty much their whole team is to set screens and how you can make that work with Siakam. And, you know, depending on the matchup, It'll be easier for defenses to switch that. But the point is, Siakam can do a lot of things for this team uh, on offense. And defensively, he's just a solid defender, man. I mean, I would say that he's probably at his best like as a help defender. But even so, like if he's guarding a good wing, a good power forward or whatever, he can hold his own. But I do think the highest potential, unless I'm just going to be dead wrong because I'm a guy on the internet, but my thoughts are that the highest potential with Siakam defensively is if you can get him roaming a little bit, you know. And, I mean, between Miles Turner protecting the rims, Siakam as a help guy, like... 
that that does make a lot of sense uh, defensively for the Pacers, in my opinion. And you you were able to keep Nemhard here, who is one of your best uh, defenders, period. But especially on the ball, obviously he doesn't start behind Halliburton. But you, you do have a collection of good defensive players here. Now, as far as like Jarris Walker's future, given your front court, we'll see. But regardless, this this is definitely a huge talent upgrade for the Pacers and. You know, if we can get into contract stuff, the age of Siakam, I mean, yeah, he's going to be 30 in a few months. And so you are hoping that he can age really well into his mid-30s and all that. And you're, of course, going to be giving him a very large contract. You don't make this move if you do not intend to do that. And so for the Pacers, you know, this was a situation where they could have just did nothing or make just some small moves or whatever. But instead, they're they're saying Halliburton at age 23, we are going to make a pretty decently sized bet here that this puts us, if not this year, then for years to come, a real shot in the Eastern Conference as Matherin continues to grow. And, I mean, obviously Halliburton's great. So, yeah, man, cool stuff. I mean, as of today, the Pacers, they're the sixth seed tied with the Knicks for the seventh seed. And, I mean, the expectations just went up.